Hi everyone, I'm back to read chapter six in our book, Meet Marie Grace from 1853, book one, and chapter six is called Switched. Inside the theater, chandelier shed sparkling light everywhere. The lobby smelled of perfume and it was full of party goers in fancy costumes. Marie Grace looked around, unsure where to go next. From a landing, two staircases branched upward to the floor above. A pair of boys dressed as soldiers hurried up the right-hand staircase, their toy swords clanking. They must be going to the costume ball too, she thought, and she followed them. On the second floor, a pair of glass doors led to a balcony. The doors were partly covered by curtains, and through a gap in the fabric, Marie Grace could see fireworks lighting up the sky like falling stars. But the boys did not stop to admire the view. They turned right. Marie Grace followed them down a wide hall where three sets of double doors, each attended by a pair of uniformed footmen, opened into a single spacious ballroom. Marie Grace could hear an, an orchestra playing a spirited polka and excitement bubbled up inside her. A woman with a gold gown asked to see her invitation. Marie Grace gave her the engraved parchment and the woman smiled and gestured her toward the double door. Marie Grace put on her mask and stepped into the ballroom. Crystal chandeliers gave a soft glow to the elegant room and she saw children in all kinds of fancy gowns and suits. Marie Grace could tell what some of the costumes were. There were shepherdesses, soldiers, princesses, and gestures, but some of the costumes were unlike anything she had seen before. Around the edges of the room, children gathered in clusters, talking and laughing, and in the center of the polished floor, dozens of dancers were swirling in circles in time to the music. As costume children skipped and twirled by, Marie Grace recognized Sophronia and Lavinia. Sophronia's angel costume was topped with a halo that shimmered on her red hair. Lavinia was wearing a shiny green gown with a narrow skirt and a long train in the back. That must be her secret costume, realized Marie Grace. I wonder what it's supposed to be. Lavinia wasn't wearing a mask and Marie Grace saw her make a face at another girl who, sp who swung the wrong direction in the polka. Marie Grace decided that she would join the next dance at the other end of the ballroom, as far from Lavinia as she poss could possibly get. She edged her way through the, crowded, through the crowd, past tables filled with platters and delicious looking sweets. Marie Grace had never seen so many treats. She took off her mask and nibbled a delicately frosted petite fleur. Two blonde girls were standing in the corner, half hidden by a huge crystal punch bowl. Marie Grace smiled at them hesitantly. The girls smiled back. They were both wearing simple blue dresses with white aprons and caps. What a beautiful fairy costume, said the taller girl, looking admirely at Marie Grace's wings. Thank you, said Marie Grace. Then she paused. She wasn't sure what the girls were dressed as, and she was afraid to make the wrong guess. The girls noticed her confusion. My sister and I are dairy maids, she explained. We're just visiting New Orleans, the younger girl added. We've never been to a ball before, she looked around. Are all balls this beautiful, this fancy? Marie Grace's toes were tapping as she watched the dancers weave back and forth. I don't know, she answered. This is my first ball too. I can't wait to dance. The polka ended and there was a pause in the music as the dancers helped themselves to refreshments. Lavinia passed by. She was wearing a green crown that matched her shiny green dress. And when she saw Marie Grace, she stopped short. Why, you, why are you here, Lavinia demanded. Marie Grace felt her face turn red. I was invited, she said shyly. Indeed, said Lavinia. Her eyes swept over Marie Grace's costumes. Costume, you don't look too bad, she admitted, but lots of girls are fairies. I'm the only mermaid queen. Lavinia turned around and Marie Grace 
realized that the long green train was supposed to be a mermaid's tail. It's very pretty, Marie Grace said politely. It's hard to dance. Is it hard to dance in? Not at all, Lavinia replied with a shrug. That suggested that she had been dancing in mermaid tails all her life. Of course, she continued. Um, I've been to lots of balls and I know all the dances. If if you've never been to a ball before, I warn you not to dance tonight. Marie Grace swallowed hard. Why not? Lavinia waved a green-gloved hand at Marie Grace. You are a newcomer, she said with a sigh. And the dancing is really only for families who are part of society and who know just what to do. Marie Grace saw the blonde girl exchange a nervous glance. I didn't know that, said Marie Grace, blushing even harder. She was confused. I have an invitation, so I thought... Of course you can watch the dancing, Lavinia interrupted. And if you'd like some sweets or punch, I suppose that would be all right, she added with a half smile. And then with a swish of her mermaid tail, she walked off to join the other dancers. Marie Grace watched Lavinia, Sophronia, and the other girls line up opposite the boys. Marie Grace wanted to line up too, but what would Lavinia do if she saw me dancing? Marie Grace wondered. She would probably make fun of me in front of everyone, just the way she does at school. The fiddlers began to play a cheerful tune and Marie Grace could not stand still any longer. She walked around the edge of the floor, dance floor to the other side of the room where she stood in the doorway watching. The music went faster and faster and the costume dancers laughed as they struggled to keep up. Um, some of them missed steps, but they all looked as if they were having a wonderful time. Marie Grace ached to join them. Suddenly, she felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned around. Another fairy. Her mirror image was standing behind her, and with a wave of her gloved hand, the fairy beckoned to Marie Grace. Marie Grace's heart was pounding as she followed the other fairy out of the ballroom, the woman in the gold dress was gone, and no one noticed the two fairies hurrying down the hall together. When they reached the staircase, the other fairy pushed aside the curtains, opened the doors, and motioned to Marie Grace. Both girls stepped out onto a tiny balcony that overlooked a courtyard. Marie Grace felt as if she were looking at her twin. Cecile, she asked, is that you? Surprise, Cecile exclaimed. She pushed her mask back from her face and Marie Grace could see that Cecile was delighted with herself. Suddenly, Marie Grace realized why Cecile had taken so long behind the Chinese screen at Mademoiselle's studio. She had borrowed a fairy costume as well. No one could tell us apart, Marie Grace said breath breathlessly. I know, said Cecile, her face bright with excitement. I have a plan. I want to see what the children's opera ball is like and you'll get to go you'll get to go to two Mar Mardi Gras balls in a low voice Cecile quickly explained her idea Marie Grace would go to Cecile's ball at the other end of the hall and Cecile would go to Marie Grace's ball after one dance they would meet back at the balcony and then return to their own balls I will it will be easy Cecile concluded Marie Grace took off her mask and turned it nervously in her hands. I wasn't invited to your ball, she reminded Cecile. I am inviting you, said Cecile confidently. I don't know, said Marie Grace. She felt her heart thumping. Uh, you said that, that the balls for white people and colored people are always separate. Don't we get into trouble if we switch places? You were the one who wished... We could go to the same ball, Cecile reminded her. I want to find out what makes the opera ball so special. And we don't get into trouble because no one will ever know. It will be our secret. Marie Grace bit her lip. She had never met a girl as daring as Cecile. And, then, and now Cecile seemed to think um, that Marie Grace was bold enough to join her. But what if the swap was more dangerous than Cecile admitted? What should I do? Marie Grace wondered as she stared out over the courtyard. Come on, Cecile said. 
It will be an adventure and it will be our adventure. Just then a burst of fireworks exploded. Oh, sorry. Just then a burst of fireworks exploded in the sky and the colors floated in the air like fairy dust. Marie Grace remembered how Cecile had said that Mardi Gras was magical. If I'm ever going to be brave, she told herself, this is the time. She turned to Cecile, I'm ready. Each girl put on her mask, then after checking to be sure that the hall was still empty, they slipped back into the building. Remember, Marie Grace whispered, just one dance. Cecile nodded and waved her gloved hand at Marie Grace. Marie Grace followed Cecile's instructions and found the other ballroom on the opposite side of the theater. As she approached, she heard music. She saw a pair of elderly women sitting together on a bench outside the door. What if they stop me, she wondered, and her hands be felt damp beneath or inside her gloves. But the ladies were busy chatter, chatting with each other and they didn't even look up when she passed. Inside the candlelit ballroom was filled with music, laughter, and conversation. The orchestra sounded just as grand as the one in the children's opera ball, and, and the room looked just as elegant. Bowls of punch and platters of delicious sweets were arranged on the linen-covered tables, and the polished floor was crowded with dancers wearing costume. In the flickering candlelight, it was hard to tell if their skin was dark or light, for some shades in between. When the music ended, the boys bowed and the girls curtsied. Yet before the dancers could catch their breath, the violin started up again. Marie Grace tapped her foot as she watched new lines of dancers form on the, do on the floor. A tall girl dressed in endless yellow ruffles appeared at her elbow. Come on, the music is starting, she said. Before M Marie Grace could reply, the girl pulled her onto the dance floor. The tempo of the music picked up and Marie Grace found herself sweeping into a turning circle of dancers. She tried to follow the, the steps, but even when she made mistakes, no one seemed to notice. Everyone was having too much fun. As Marie Grace twirled around, the silver wings on her costume fluttered. This is wonderful, she thought. All too soon, the music ended and Marie Grace longed to stay, but she remembered her agreement with Cecile, just one dance. Pardon me, she murmured as she hurried through the crowded ballroom toward the door. Excuse me. She ran down the hall to the balcony at the top of the stairs and then slipped behind the curtain. She took, off her, she took her mask off and a moment later, Cecile arrived. You were right, Marie Grace told Cecile with a grin. It was an adventure. I had a better time at your ball than I did at mine. And I danced. I danced too, said Cecile, lifting her mask. The grin faded from Marie Grace's face. Oh no, she whispered, remembering Lavinia's strict instructions. I should have warned you, Cecile, not to dance. But Cecile was smiling proudly. Yes, even though a bossy girl told me not to. Marie Grace felt dread in the pit of her stomach. What was the girl wearing? Pooh, said Cecile with a shrug. She was dressed in green. She looked like an alligator. What did you do? Marie Grace asked anxiously. I just laughed and kept on dancing. You should have seen the look on her face. Cecile giggled. All the confidence Marie Grace had felt at Cecile's ball faded. We'd better go back, she whispered to Cecile. We, uh, we, Cecile agreed. We can talk more at our lessons. Now we have our Mardi Gras secret to share. She reached out and gave Marie Grace a quick hug. Bonne nuit, good night. Marie Grace's heart was warmed by Cecile's hug. Bonne nuit, she replied, and she watched her fairy twin run down the hall. She's not scared of anyone or anything, Marie Grace thought as Cecile disappeared from view. Marie Grace put her mask back on and then headed down the hall to face Lavinia. As soon as she entered the ballroom, Marie Grace spotted Lavinia on the other side of the dance floor. The green crown and the slimy green dress stood out among the, the crowd of co costumes. And when Lavinia caught sight of Marie Grace, she narrowed her eyes. 
and glared at her as if to say, you're in trouble. Marie Grace looked at her and saw that Cecile was right. Lavinia, with her angry eyes, her jutting chin, and her shiny green dress, dress really did look like an alligator. She's not a mermaid queen at all, Marie Grace realized. She's not any kind of queen. She just thinks she is. The idea of Lavinia dressed up as an alligator was so silly that Marie Grace started to giggle. Then she laughed out loud. Suddenly, she wasn't afraid at all. She felt as light as a fairy wings she was wearing. A tall man in a black suit called out, Ladies and gentlemen, please line up for the last dance of the evening, the Virginia Reel. Marie Grace hurried to the corner where the sisters in matching blue dresses stood by the punch bowl. Let's join in, Marie Grace urged them. We don't have to listen to that other girl. We can dance if we want to. The sisters looked at each other and then turned to Marie Grace. Are you sure? The older one asked. Yes, said Marie Grace. I'm inviting you. Marie Grace headed to the center of the ballroom floor. After some hesitation, the girls, the sisters followed her. The boy dressed in the pirate stood across from Marie Grace. He bowed to her as if, as the fiddle played the opening bars of the Virginia Reel. Marie Grace curtsied to the pirate boy. Then, smiling broadly, she stepped up in time to the music and began to skip and whirl across the ballroom floor. When the ball was over, Marie Grace found her father waiting in the lobby. Until, oh, unlike the other grown-ups who were arriving at the hotel dressed in costumes for their other dances, Papa was still wearing his work clothes and he was carrying a medical bag. Hello, Grace, he greeted her. Your fairy dress looks lovely. I'm sorry I couldn't go home in time to bring you to the ball. A little boy at Holy Trinity Orphanage was sick and I needed to help him. Don't worry, Papa, Marie Grace reassured him. Mrs. Curtis and I managed just fine. Just then, Cecile passed on the steps. She was walking between two elegantly dressed grown-ups and Marie Grace guessed um, uh, Marie Grace guessed they were her parents. Cecile turned and waved to Marie Grace before she stepped into the waiting carriage. Marie Grace waved back happily. She could hardly wait to Cecile, see Cecile at their next lesson. They had so much to talk about. Did you have a good time at the ball? He, her father asked as they strolled along the cool, damp evening air. Oh, yes, said Marie Grace tucking her arm into her father's. There was love, there was beautiful music, and I danced. And who is that girl? The one you waved to? The one whose costume looks just like yours, he asked. Her name's Cecile, said Marie Grace, smiling, and she's my friend. And that is the end of our book of Meet Marie Grace from 1853. And next time I'll read A Peek into the Past.